My name is Steve Wilby with Bentley System, and this month's uh, SIG meeting is on modeling and reinforcement detailing of bridges. So again, I want to welcome everybody to the SIG. Um, put together some reasons here on, on why it's good to uh, participate in these SIG meetings. Um, we are recording it and it will be posted to uh, the Learn server for the, yourselves or any of your colleagues that were unable to attend. Uh, we do give PDHs uh, to these via Bentley uh, transcript. Uh, you will receive an email after the meeting uh, so you can fill that out. If you have multiple colleagues in a meeting room at your office, excellent. Uh, you can uh, submit multiple names there and we will give everyone a PDH for attending. Uh, feel free to contact us with any issues that you have regarding those PDHs and send those emails to bentley.institute at bentley.com. And then, uh, you know, of course, the cost, these are all complimentary. They're just, you know, an hour of your time or less, hopefully, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll be well spent. And always check this schedule for future SIGs. We, we don't own, only have them for the bridge products, but we have them for all of our other uh, products pretty much as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, some reasons on participating in the SIG is, is the overall learning experience, being able to stay on top of the uh, latest products and technology and trends uh, that as we introduce them here at Bentley. You do, like I said, get those PDHs and it gives you a chance to uh, meet not only uh, myself and some of my Bentley colleagues, but also uh, other folks from around the world uh, that are interested in the same things that you are. So as far as today's agenda goes, uh, we'll start out by looking at kind of the traditional design process versus maybe a more optimal, what I call a BIM, uh, interoperable workflow. And then uh, we'll talk briefly about OpenBridge Designer and very briefly as it relates to uh, the Pro Concrete software and the Pro Structures portion of thing. And then we'll spend the rest of the time focusing on uh, Pro Structures itself. So if we look at a, a typical workflow today in a lot of um, agencies and consulting firms when it comes to structural design, uh, typically most of the work early on is very much on the uh, analytical modeling and design process, uh, creating those analytical models, doing your code checks, generating reports, uh, coming up with a um, workable design. And then from there, um, for the most part, it's pretty much a very manual process to get everything over to what we call design documentation, generating uh, those 2D plans, uh, generating quantities, uh, doing detailing work as a, in a specially uh, manual process. I hear, you know, and talk to a lot of folks from various agencies and, and consulting firms, and most of them that is a very manual process and. Uh, um, a lot to be desired there, of course. So, and then, you know, from there, we're taking all that 2D information, basically a big pile of paper, and passing it on to the construction folks, uh, the folks doing inspection a few years from now, uh, the folks that are going to be responsible for load rating and routing and permitting uh, the structure. And with OpenBridge Designer, uh, we think there is a more uh, optimal workflow, uh, something that's a lot more interoperable where we can start out by physically modeling the bridge up front and let's send it to the analytical software as an automated process, literally kind of press a button and and send uh, that steel girder bridge model or precast girder bridge model or uh, segmental bridge, whatever it is that you've modeled, let's send that to the analytical software so we don't have to re-input the information over there. Uh, go ahead and go about the analytical uh, modeling, design, code check, even maybe load rating process over there. And if any changes are made at that point, let's send those changes back to that physical model. Let's keep it up to date and in sync with the analytical model. And then from that physical model, uh, we can generate 2D plans as still needed. 
Uh, we can do quantities directly from that 3D model. And, oh, by the way, we could go ahead and do some 3D detailing on that as well, all on that same model. And then from that, let's send, you know, whether it's paper or electronically, and going forward, hopefully it'll be more and more electronic. Let's send that information to construction and inspection, um, do load rating, uh, do some routing and permitting. Uh, no reason to reinvent the wheel when we get to those uh, downstream processes there. So again, OpenBridge Designer is that one uh, product to kind of tie all these things together. Gives you the ability to design in reality context. Uh, gives you the ability to rapidly model the structure. Uh, and then integrate other disciplines as well. Like I said, the pro structures part of it is what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, but also the Navigator, Gantt, and Lumen RT. They're all based on that same uh, Connect platform. And so it's going to give us the ability to utilize this federated model uh, throughout the entire workflow and, and process uh, of designing the structure, uh, but also send it on downstream for operations and maintenance later on. And then, of course, improving all of our project deliverables as well. Now, again, for those of you not familiar with the, uh, the OpenBridge modeler portion or piece of OpenBridge Designer, uh, again, we're still focusing on the five uh, superstructure types today, uh, precast, pretension, uh, girder bridges, steel girder bridges uh, with concrete slabs, either rolled shapes or built up plate girders, segmental bridges, either span by span or balanced cantilever, and then cast in place uh, concrete boxes or slab structures. And then on the substructure side, Again, much of what we see in the Leap products today as far as either stem wall or pile cap abutments, uh, and then piers, be it wall piers, multi-column hammerheads and pile bins, uh, and then also user-defined uh, options there as well. So one thing that is new to OpenBridge Modeler, and I do want to point out, uh, is this ability to have uh, parametric substructure elements, whether they're a... Uh, pier uh, or an abutment. So they, you now have the ability to create parametric cells uh, that can be used in the uh, modeling of these piers and abutments. We have a few in the library already today and we did just last week if I remember correctly post a uh, training guide uh, for creating your own uh, parametric cell uh, or you may also hear the term functional components there as well. So these are all um, basically a, a 3D solid element that you can uh, create yourself and put a whole host of variables on that, uh, very much like the peer and abutment templates that come with the software today. Uh, but these don't really have the limitations that our parametric cells do because this is your cell for your structures uh, and you know exactly what you need. So if you need an abutment with a uh, corbel on the back or a, a back wall width that varies or you want to tie in the wing walls with the abutment uh, and make that a little more uh, concise and better workflow. Those are all things that can be done with uh, these, uh, these parametric cells. So here's an example of an abutment uh, that was added or that's a part of the uh, library and the current release of OpenBridge Modeler. And again, just goes to show you, you can have as many variables as needed here uh, to control this and and really get this to operate just about any way you want. And, and then the software will take care of placing this in the model uh, when you're ready. And then you, of course, can change these uh, variables up front. Uh, or you can do it once uh, the peer abutment has been placed in the model. And then we always have that uh, connection to the analytics uh, where we can send this physical model uh, to the analytical software uh, for analysis, design, and load rating. So let's take a look at the uh, pro structures piece of this here. So why <clears throat> pro structures, um, complex structures um, where 2D plans are hard to depict what's going on to be constructed. 
to me, 3D is a lot easier to look at and a lot easier to, to get information from. And you know what? We do live in a 3D world, and, and BIM is everywhere now. So uh, contractors are uh, more and more expecting uh, and, and very appreciative of um, those 3D models. Uh, and then, you know, if we're going to interact with other software, uh, we need something like a Pro Structures and an OpenBridge Modeler environment to be able to do that. So that 3D model is going to be our single source of truth going forward. Any changes we make on the OpenBridge Modeler side uh, will be reflected on the uh, Pro Structure side and, and vice versa. So again, what we're going to be doing uh, as we begin this transition from the traditional 2D plans to 3D detailing, um, you know, we, we realize uh, that you still need to submit uh, these 2D plans via uh, per legal and contractual requirements. Um, so we give you that uh, ability with the ProStructure software. So here we're going to take a look at uh, a 3D pier uh, that's been fully reinforced. Oop, let me go ahead and play that video for us. So here's kind of what that pier looks like today. And going forward, what we can do is we can use this for uh, our plans production. Okay, we can use dynamic views that are a, a native functionality of uh, the MicroStation Connect platform and allow you to go in and create elevation views, plan views, and section views. In this case, uh, we're going to take, looking at the top view of this, we'll use the section tool and that will give us an elevation view of the pier. So this is a, a drawing model. Okay, For those of you that aren't familiar with some of the terminology, this is now a drawing model. And then from that, I can do other sections. In this case, I'm going to do a section of the column. So using that very same section tool I used a moment ago to create an elevation view, now I'm going to create a section view of that column. And these are live dynamic views of that model. So what that means is, to you as the designer, if this model changes, those all update automatically just like any other reference file would. Okay, this is a, a live slice through this model and uh, gives you some, some really powerful capabilities. I remember seeing this probably five, six, seven, eight years ago uh, when it was first introduced to MicroStation. And when I saw it, I realized, okay, that's what's going to get us from doing everything as 2D and being able to easily work in 3D. So that now I've created a few uh, different drawing models. I'm gonna, I've opened up a sheet model in the same file and I'm going to drag in here some of those different views that I just created, some of those different drawing models and put them onto the sheet here. And it's there's a variety of ways it can be done, uh, but basically it's just a, it's really just attaching a reference file. But I kind of like the drag and drop capabilities that Explorer gives us here. And even after you bring something like this in, um, you can always move it. It's just simply a reference. Uh, and if it's not the right size, we can click on the uh, little detail at the bottom there. And I can go in and pick a different scale at this point. Even though the drawing model is one scale, we can represent it here at any scale that we need to uh, for the plans. And annotation scale behind the scenes is going to take care of making sure that everything we do here is uh, the annotation it itself is at the proper scale. So again, I know this one's probably not the size I want. I can go ahead and change the scale of it first and then move it. So right click on it, select move reference and set it where I want on the sheet. And then from there, uh, you know, on back in those drawing models, we can go ahead and add some intelligent callouts uh, and place these in these 2D views. And why are these intelligent? Well, if that model changes, if the reinforcing in there changes, um, if the designer goes in and changes a bar size or the number of bars, the spacing of the bars, whatever's changed there, or, or maybe just the, the size of the footing changes. Uh, so your <coughs> quantities are, are impacted by that. All of that's going to um, affect those labels that we see there.
So next up here, how do we go about placing uh, some of the bars here in the model? So you can see across the top of the screen here uh, within the ProStructure software, uh, we have a variety of tools here for placing these bars out here. And so what I've done is I've referenced, I, I, I'm in an empty file, and then I've referenced in uh, an OpenBridge model. And then I'm going in and telling it, okay, I want to add some uh, reinforcing to this footing. So once I get the bar sizes in there that I want, the number of bars in each direction, and the bar sizes and the end conditions that I want on those bars, then I can start identifying uh, a variety of different footings that all have uh, and use those same configuration. So again, we can clone that to just about any other uh, pier or abutment out there. And if we need to make changes to individual ones after they're out there, uh, we can do that as well. And you can see not only can we put the uh, reinforcing in the footing, uh, we can have it up in the columns, we can have it in the cap, you can have it anywhere on the entire model. Uh, there, there really are no uh, limitations there. And again, individually, now this one has a sloped cap here. Uh, so we're going to go in and change that cover a little bit and force all that reinforcing uh, below and into or inside of uh, all the uh, concrete that's there. And then if we want to do the columns, again, we've got a, a special tool for doing column reinforcing here for either circular or rectangular columns. Again, a pretty very straightforward and simple process here where I can go out and select the uh, solid element that represents the concrete. Once I do that, it recognizes that, oh, this is a circular column and uh, allows me to specify a number of bars. I can select a bar uh, arrangement and set a size, and then I can also give it some offsets at the top and bottom of those bars so I can control how far do those bars extend on up into the cap and then also down into the footing and then also um, beyond that what kind of entreatments to put on all those bars do we want straight ends on them uh, do we want a hook on them do we need a, a 90 degree bend a 135 and, and so forth so all those things are uh, possible here So here's uh, the same tool uh, for a rectangular column and it of course changes shape and now instead of just asking for a total number of bars it allows you to specify how many bars do we have on the shortest face, how many bars on the longer face um, and then again we can identify how we want to have that reinforcing placed out there, set the bar size on these. Uh, set any lap options or tie options uh, and in treatments on those bars as well. So you see very dynamic, very easy to see what's going on here. And of course behind the scenes as we're going, um, quantities in that are, are being computed as we go as well. We'll take a look at that process here in just a moment. So again, one thing to keep in mind, all of this is on a common platform. Everything here is a DGN file that we're looking at. Uh, it's all on the MicroStation Connect platform, whether you're running Open Bridge Designer, Ro Open Roads Designer, Open Site Designer, Open Building Designer, the Pro Structure software, all of those have one key thing in common, and that is uh, that MicroStation Connect platform that makes it very easy for us to share the files with anybody else on the design team. So let's take a look at placing some bars up front here. Um, so what we'll do is here I've got just a couple of uh, solid shapes here uh, that I want to go ahead and place uh, some reinforcing into. Okay, so again we'll kind of walk through this process of placing that reinforcing out there. So I've identified uh, the concrete shape and from that it's used uh, whatever I had in there previously as defaults uh, for placing uh, bars and that in here. So for example I can tell it at the bottom of this uh, spiral cage right here I want to have three extra turns at the top and bottom of it. Again very simple to go in and specify uh, values like that and, and again let it take care of quantifying all of this later on for us. 
So again, what's what are some key things here along the way um, to keep in mind? So the elements that we create from MicroStation or from OBM are MicroStation solids. They are smart solids uh, that are compatible with the ProConcrete software. So when we started developing OpenBridge Modeler five, six years ago, uh, that was a key thing for us as we knew we wanted to be able to integrate uh, our models with the ProConcrete software and take advantage of uh, the functionality there. Um, any types of footings uh, can be detailed as part of this process. And, and the elements don't have to all come from OpenBridge Modeler. If you go out and you supplement your model with other MicroStation solids, that's perfectly fine. Um, Open uh, Pro Concrete can take advantage of those elements for you. But the really powerful thing is, is that you know if you go in and you were to detail these columns here uh, with the ProStructure software, then maybe you go back to OpenBridge Modeler or, or someone else is taking care of updating that model and they change um, the elevation on the top of the footing so now the column links are different. Uh, when you go back to the ProStructure software, it will recognize that changes have been made to that referenced model and adjust all of the reinforcing accordingly. Um, and then you do have the ability to save things as templates for repetitive uh, detailing tasks later on. Um, and then we also have the ability to clone rebar details from one element to another. And then one other thing to keep in mind, and, and this is just, I guess maybe more of a coming attraction, but it, but it is coming here very, very soon, is the ProStructure software also working with um, those same parametric cells uh, that were taken advantage of on the uh, OpenBridge modeler side. So again, let's take a look at another uh, example here of a uh, an OpenBridge modeler uh, model uh, referenced in to ProStructures. So again, going to go ahead and do some pad reinforcing here real quick. Go ahead and set uh, the number of bars on this uh, for both the long and short direction on both the uh, top and bottom. Set the bar sizes. Go in and select that concrete pad. Uh, again, in a transparent mode like I have the visualization set to here, it makes it very easy to see what's going on. And, and as you make changes to the numbers, uh, see those reflected immediately uh, in the model as well. And then again, give you the ability to go ahead and copy that or clone that over to uh, your other footings on the structure as well. So here's an example of um, doing that same thing uh, or kind of that same model uh, if you will but go ahead and doing the columns again. So again identify the column uh, if it's circular, it simply asks you for a number of bars and your clearances. Uh, and then you can also set the information there for that uh, spiral cage at this time as well. And again, there isn't anything you can't really uh, change or control here at this point. And if you're not doing a spiral cage, then we can do uh, simply circular ties as well. Uh, either of those are uh, certainly an option for you. So next up here, uh, what I want to take a look at or describe is what we call our uh, face-based uh, rebar modeling. So we have a set of tools and, and this is uh, primarily been worked on uh, once folks started using uh, the Pro Concrete software for uh, bridges and structures. It was initially developed more for the uh, kind of building side of the company, uh, the architectural side, uh, but it, there's nothing to prevent us from using it uh, on structures as well. Uh, but they have gone in and added some really powerful tools uh, to make this an easier process. Uh, because there are times when we have some irregular shapes here uh, that we need to be able to place that reinforcing along and get it to follow any kind of shape, you know, not just simple uh, rectangles and circles and those sorts of things. There's times when we have uh, shapes with offsets and, and, and just could be anything, right? So these three tools right here especially 
um, make this a, a much easier process. And so we have one tool to create an offset offset concrete face. We can take the, a solid element here and and identify any face here and offset it by some distance. And we can use those same variables that are used for the parametric modeling of cells uh, to set those cover values. That way if a cover needs to change instead of you going back and changing it for each individual one you could potentially change this one or two variables and those covers would update and then all the reinforcing would update as well. Um, and then once we offset those faces now they're going to be intersecting uh, planes basically and we need lines at those intersecting offset faces or where those planes intersect. Uh, we need some lines at those locations to place reinforcing and, and once we have those lines they can be used with these four tools uh, specifically. So let's take a look at a couple examples of that. Here's one where we have a tapered cap okay and we're going to do what's called a single rebar distribution here and what this tool allows me to do is I go in and identify the, the concrete shape I've identified this 3D red line right here um, that I want my bar to look like and then I'll identify uh, the path for those bars and you can see what it's done here is it's gone ahead and added uh, those bars to this model here okay simple as that now next up we'll take a look at another example here and in this example I have this one u-shaped bar here this single bar and I want it to create a series of these along a path so we have something called a single rebar distribution so again we've gone in and drawn a single bar here and then from that single bar what I'm going to do is and basically it's just three lines right I, I'm going to go in and set um, a bar size for this I'll select the concrete outline uh, that we're going to be using and then I'll identify the element that represents the bar which again were just lines placed or, and created with the place line command um, and then I'm going to set a distribution method and basically specify a, a start and end offset uh, and a spacing and then for the path for it to follow it could be either a series of points or it could be some microstation element in the drawing that I want to use for that path so I'm going to go in and select uh, an element to use uh, for that path uh, that I previously placed out here in the file so I have a dashed line here that I want it to follow uh, to place those bars so I identify it, accept it, and now we can see that it's placed that series of bars uh, out here along uh, that path. Here's another example. So I, I've already used the um, associative extraction tool uh, to go in and offset the faces, and I've created the lines at the intersection of those faces, and now I want to place some stirrups around those four lines. So I'm going to use the irregular dispatch tool here. And this one tool could really be used to do uh, all of your reinforcing if you really needed to. There's really no limitations on what this can do. So I'm going to walk around and very carefully identify the four lines uh, that make up the uh, limiter, limits or uh, perimeter of that reinforcing and then just walk all the way around and identify those four lines and, and actually come back and identify the first one also as my last line so I identified five lines total and now it's essentially created a, a series of stirrups of varying heights and then I can change and put different in conditions on those bars as needed to come up with uh, what I want those to look like Now again, just to kind of reiterate this, this is again what we call our face-based uh, rebar tools. Uh, it can be used on any face or surface of a concrete solid element, uh, so that it can be extracted and offset. And that offset surface is parametric to the solid uh, because we can specify and use variables here. And then 
once you have, uh, you know, once any two of those offset surfaces are intersected, uh, we use this associative intersection tool to create a line or some kind of an element, whatever that path is, it may not be linear, uh, for the reinforcing to follow. And, and then we use, again, those elements uh, to define when and how uh, to place our reinforcing. So again, these are, these could be generic microstation solids, uh, or they could come from uh, open bridge modeler or a combination of both. It, it doesn't really matter how they get there. And eventually, once you've um, modeled all this reinforcing, then you can come back and uh, generate quantities from those. So we can define uh, what we call rebar positioning and, and assign uh, shapes and bar marks to all the reinforcing out here. And we do have libraries of um, kind of standard shapes out there, uh, but those are customizable as well. So we do have like ACI and, and a variety of other standards already built in or baked into the software. Um, but as agencies are beginning to uh, take interest and, and want to start using the software, we'll be coming up with and adding uh, their bar shapes uh, to the libraries as well. So, and then from that, it's going to create a database of all the reinforcing on the project because you're probably not going to have everything in one file. Uh, I'm certainly not an all my eggs in one basket kind of guy. So, uh, you may have to pull information from a variety of locations and, and populate a database. And then from that, bar schedules and bar form, bar lists uh, can be generated and, and regenerated, you know, if bars get added or, or changed at any point in the process. Now when we do come up with that customized bar bending schedule, uh, we can also do volumes as well. Uh, and when it comes to the concrete volumes, we can go so far as to subtract the rebar from uh, the concrete volume. And again, these bar bending schedules are customizable as well. There are some layout tools that allow you to go in and, and make these look any way you want, with or without uh, the bending shapes in there, uh, putting putting in all your dimensional callouts in here. Uh, the format of this is, is entirely up to you. And then, like I said, then, you know, eventually at some point we're going to want to pull quantities from this model. So we're going to use this positioning tool to do that. Uh, I'm going to go out here and just do all of the bars that are within this one uh, abutment and wing walls and, and footing that we see here. So I'll go ahead and kick off that process. Once it runs through it, it shows me what we call our positioning results. I accept that. Uh, shows us some cage results. And then eventually uh, we get to the point of seeing uh, the results of that reinforcement. We see some shapes listed out here uh, with bar marks associated with them. How many bars do we have? Uh, the weight, the material, and, and all the other properties of it. What are all the dimensional links? Uh, any of that can be identified by double clicking uh, on those elements. And then if we want, we can go ahead and create a uh, part list uh, for this as well. So we can kind of see uh, a schedule of all this reinforcing and maybe more of a, let's say, a sheet format. So there's our database with all of our bars in it. We can go ahead and select a, a list file, a file that's going to give us a, some predefined format that we can either uh, print out or preview directly here and see um, information for all the bars uh, that were part of this model. And again, the format of that is entirely uh, up to you. So again, what's this give us? Uh, we have that plans production capability that gives us the ability to generate some 2D drawings from that 3D model. So we've seen pretty easy to get the bars in there in 3D. Uh, and then earlier we even saw, you know, it's, it's really not all that hard to generate uh, the 2D views as well. Uh, once you learn one tool, that, that section tool, uh, it's going to make it very easy to go in and um, generate those 2D views and then put them into a sheet format for you. And, and always keep in mind that all of this is tied back to uh, that 3D model. And then the labeling tools in there, those are actually out of the old uh, Bentley Geopack software. 
uh, for for those of you that may have used or seen that in the past uh, we took probably the most powerful part of that software and built it in and merged it in with uh, Pro Concrete here so you can uh, do all your callouts uh, on your model there. So let's take a look at a quick um, example of that. So here's that model we looked at a moment ago, uh, just a very simple uh, foundation and a couple of short uh, columns here. And we'll go ahead and create a section callout of this. So again, if I'm in a top view like this and I use a section callout, what am I creating? I'm creating an elevation view of this right here. So there's our elevation view. And from that, it's smart enough to kind of change how the, the bars are shown in this view. Okay, it knows you may or may not want to see all those bars. Uh, so you can go in and change the look of it. Um, and, you know, it, it makes an initial guess at it, but you can always come in here and, and change exactly how you want these bars to look. And then again, adding uh, callouts is a very easy process here as well. You can have predefined uh, callouts all ready to go, and then just give it a couple of clicks out there to identify how you want that leader to look, and go ahead and, and place uh, your callouts out there. Once you have one callout, if you want other bars to use that same type of a callout, uh, you can actually copy that bar label as well. So here we're going to uh, select this label and add it to those two bars that are out there. And then just using a very simple drag and drop uh, technique, you can reposition those anywhere you want. And again, very easy to go in here and tell it whether to uh, call out all the bars or, or show in detail all the bars, show a single bar, maybe have it show just the first and last bar. All of those are options when it comes to uh, various ranges of bars and how you make those call outs look. So again here we are copying that label uh, for that bar range to a couple of other different bar ranges out there and then you can always double click any of those and go in and change um, the values on those and, and make those call outs anything you want and, and reposition them as needed as well. So again, very, very uh, quick and simple process uh, to do all of this. Here's a more um, complicated example. This is actually a segmental bridge that was uh, modeled with the OpenBridge Modeler software. Uh, this is part of our training guide as far as the, the bridge model itself goes. Um, but we will use some of those uh, face-based tools here to go in and select one of these segments and go in and um, model all the reinforcing in that segment. So real quick, here's kind of what it looks like in the end. Um, again, this was all done with the, uh, the uh, face-based tools that we have here in the software to perform a, a series of uh, associative extractions and, and intersections uh, from that model and, and generate those elements that were needed to get that reinforcing to do exactly uh, what we needed it to do. So again, um, we're kind of getting towards the end of the presentation here, so I want to kind of wrap this up. So again, the benefits are the ability to model really any type of structure uh, with the OpenBridge Modeler software. Um, this is a, a true BIM model. It's the same model that's used for the design, the analytics, and the plans production. Uh, as things change, we're just updating that model as we go, and any other piece of software that needs to talk to it and, and get information from it can. And again, those modifications are propagated not only throughout the model, uh, but to uh, your uh, drawing and sheet models as well. 
And if you want, you do have the added benefit or ability to go in and do clash detection against any of these elements. Uh, not just the rebar, but it could be used on any portion of this 3D model. Um, so if you have subsurface utilities uh, modeled with, let's say, the Sioux uh, tools that are in uh, Open Roads Designer, you could compare those to the uh, footings and and pile uh, that are part of your proposed structure. Or maybe you have an existing structure and you're building a new one really close to it. You can model both the existing and the new one and, and make sure you don't have any uh, clashing issues there as well. The clash detection can also be used for checking of clearances, whether they're vertical uh, or horizontal uh, in the situation, of, let's say a structure over a uh, railroad. So all of those things are uh, options here. And of course, quantities are just something we get uh, at the end uh, as a for free kind of thing uh, for going through the uh, process of, of modeling and detailing the structure. And ideally, again, we can get an intelligent eye model in the end uh, that we can go ahead and send out uh, for uh, construction and inspection purposes. So with that, uh, that was the last slide that I have. I want to thank everybody for their time. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.